Black Friday is supposed to represent a sales bonanza, but this year, the day brought a rude awakening for many Chinese exporters who sell to the U.S. AMZ 123 survey data shows that as of November 21st, nearly 40% of the 1,647 sellers surveyed have experienced a decline in Black Friday sales. Among them, 14.33% of sellers have even seen a drop of more than 50%, and only 25.32% of sellers have experienced an increase in sales. The sales volume of the remaining 36% of sellers was the same as usual. The numbers paint a grim picture across the board. Only 22% of sellers saw the expected surge in Black Friday orders. Perhaps even more concerning, 11% said that despite higher order volumes, their profit margins took a significant hit due to high advertising and promotional costs needed to generate those sales. Orders evaporate while costs skyrocket for beleaguered sellers. The plunging sales have left many cross-border businesses in dire financial straits. Merchants describe order volumes drying up during a time that should represent peak demand. One contributing factor is runaway advertising spending in hopes of salvaging some sales. Promotional pricing and ads have eaten into profit margins, even for the lucky few who managed to push some additional volume. Many people describe that Black Friday brought low orders and high advertising costs, creating a worst-case scenario. The crisis has amplified over recent years. Sellers point to significantly higher volumes during past Black Fridays and even non-peak sales periods. It seems the bottom has fallen out of the channel this year, leading some to declare dramatically that traffic had simply been hijacked or somehow vanished entirely for Chinese export platforms. In response to the crisis, some gallows humor has emerged among sellers to help diminish the stress. One popular spell making the rounds includes rhyming couplets, urging calm and patience during this storm, while reassuring that this too shall pass. However, behind the humorous bravado lies a kernel of truth. The brutal sales climate has left many cross-border sellers struggling to make sense of what happened. There are no easy explanations for why the well went bone dry, nor clear paths back to prosperity. The losses so far are all too real, and sellers are left praying for the nightmare before Christmas to end. Diverging Fortunes, U.S. Sites, Surge While Chinese Platforms Crumble The dramatic plunge for Chinese export channels stands in stark contrast to the stellar performance on some U.S. e-commerce platforms. Industry observers highlighted that major sites not collaborating with China saw sales surge over Black Friday week. Meanwhile, platforms focused on Chinese cross-border commerce suffered failure across the board. Categories spanning apparel to household items to small appliances saw little upside, and in many cases volume dropped significantly compared to regular weeks. The bifurcation illustrates a troubling trend of diminishing prospects for export-focused businesses catering to foreign markets. While major domestic players like Amazon can rely on steady demand, for the time being, Chinese merchants pinning their hopes overseas face increasing adversity. Black Friday was the most prominent sign thus far that fortunes may be reversing for these sellers. The special week of discounts that was supposed to produce a windfall yielded little besides red ink and frustration. Rather than celebrating the start of the holiday peak, many Chinese exporters are left questioning if they can survive this disastrous shopping season at all. The divergence with major U.S. retailers only underscores that this year may mark a permanent downshift for smaller cross-border merchants chasing overseas consumers. Quality woes drive customers away from Chinese export platforms. On top of order declines, Chinese cross-border players must also grapple with growing reputation damage tied to product quality and reviews. Consumer sentiment appears to be shifting, especially for category leaders. For example, fast fashion powerhouse Shane once seemed to offer an unbeatable value proposition with its rock-bottom prices. 
but damaging critiques have emerged focusing on terrible logistics, transparency issues around supply chains and labor, and disposable clothes with short lifespans. Scathing reviews now plaster forums with complaints saying the quality is really poor, or even deeming items unwearable or like junk. Where Cheyenne once won praise for extremely affordable options, customers now blast practices like drop shipping direct from Chinese factories with little quality control. And Shine is no outlier. Rapid growth may have allowed some major Chinese e-commerce brands to paper over quality control issues in the past. But consumer distrust seems to have curdled into disappointment, resignation, and rejection. According to the owner, within the span of a year, the robot set had been repaired once and the vacuum robot itself was replaced with a new one. Yet, the problem is still the same. Despite the floor being spotless, the robot is still entangled with thin air. Chinese Robotic Vacuum Cleaner versus Seeds The Correct Way of Dealing with Chinese Products The waves of criticism have slowly eroded consumer trust in Chinese export platforms more broadly. Even brand devotees seem to be losing their evangelism and loyalty. Sentiment continues trending toward written-off purchases from China as sunk-cost transactions rather than satisfactory experiences. This reality confronts Chinese cross-border sellers with the question of whether quality concerns have reached a point where significant portions of their target market cannot be won back. The opportunity to turn around public sentiment shrinks with each new story of substandard products and post-purchase regret. If the structural issues causing quality gaps remain unaddressed, export-focused businesses may witness more overseas consumers permanently fleeing for alternative options rather than continuing to endure disappointments. Geopolitical tensions threaten viability of low-cost cross-border model. Looming larger than sales fluctuations or quality gripes is the rapid deterioration of the U.S.-China relationship in recent years. Ramping criticism of Chinese companies and government policies by American politicians now threatens to undermine Chinese cross-border e-commerce entirely through proposed policy changes. A flashy flashpoint came this summer when Republican and Democratic senators jointly introduced the Import Security and Fairness Act. The bill takes aim at Chinese exporters by eliminating a tax exemption on imports under $800 value. This loophole of not taxing cheap direct mail packages from China has enabled the ultra-low pricing model that sites like Shane and other Chinese platforms rely on. By closing the sub-$800 exemption, the new trade act would remove a critical advantage propping up low-cost Chinese goods. Companies focused on high volume, low margin, and rock-bottom pricing stand to take the biggest hit. The sudden increase in taxes on traditionally non-assessed imports could wipe out the razor-thin margins that enable deep discounts. The policy reflects a broader shift in attitudes where national security and economic priorities have made the U.S. government skeptical of perceived Chinese threats. Unfortunately for cross-border sellers, this has placed them squarely in the crosshairs of the conflict. Fears rise that sellers who have invested heavily in the direct mail export format could see their business model undermined overnight by the loss of preferential tax treatment. The coming months will determine whether the bill gathers momentum to pass into law. But for Chinese merchants heavily dependent on exporting low-priced goods, the writing may already be on the wall. A structural shift in trade policies could permanently rupture the formula that delivered success over the past decade. Managing that transition could determine if businesses sink or swim in the years ahead. Forced labor allegations also bedevil Chinese exporters. In addition to direct economic threats, Chinese cross-border players also face scrutiny over social compliance and human rights. Brands including Shine and Marketplace DHgate stand accused of potentially benefiting from forced labor in China's Xinjiang region. 
The allegations assert major e-commerce players are positioned to ignore or benefit from oppressed labor like prison camps in Xinjiang. Critics argue the tax exemption on sub-$800 imports enables goods tainted by human rights violations to slip into the U.S. undetected at massive scales. Closing this trade loophole has consequently become an urgent agenda item for policymakers like Senator Marco Rubio. The social compliance issues wrap moral outrage within the economic argument for reforming preferential trade policies favoring Chinese goods. Whether concrete evidence eventually substantiates claims around brands' conflict in forced labor remains to be seen. But the court of public perception matters greatly, and the abundance of accusations has already molded perspectives on both sides. Rightly or wrongly, Chinese export channels now fight a battle to disassociate themselves from the troubles in Xinjiang. With intense scrutiny applied to social issues in supply chains, cross-border commerce faces substantial reputational risks tied to China's human rights record, in addition to the aforementioned product quality concerns. Between rising customer distrust and political attacks seeking to restructure trade flows out of China, e-commerce exporters are caught in a vice grip threatening their viability. Finding a path forward amidst the swirling chaos grows more challenging by the day. Excessive overtime mandates continue, despite slowing sales. While sales flounder, Chinese e-commerce companies still expect maximum effort from their workers. Sellers imposed mandatory overtime throughout Black Friday Cyber Week. Some demanded all-nighters with overnight and weekend shifts required to monitor promotions. Employees lament working days straight with few breaks while subsisting on minimal meal allowances. Despite the legislated standard of a five-day, 40-hour work week, many report 60-80 hour weeks as typical crunch time norms. When staff raised complaints about safety traveling home late nights or reimbursements for transport, leadership reportedly dismissed concerns. Requests for basic provisions for those forced into overnight shifts failed to generate meaningful changes either. The grueling overtime stretched through the year's biggest shopping season, even as lackluster revenues couldn't cover basic company operations. The contrast illuminates the deeply embedded mindsets valuing worker sacrifice and adherence to short-term targets above all else. Moreover, the dismissal of grievances underscores the still-limited power held by Chinese workers to oppose unfair company policies. Despite bold pledges to curtail excessive hours, reduce internal competition, and promote work-life balance, Overburdened schedules remain the norm for many. The gulf between official stances and on-the-ground realities suggests a long road still lies ahead before balanced, humane working conditions take hold. In the interim, Chinese e-commerce staff must continue treading water amidst swirling undercurrents while seeking slight gains along the margins. Progress may arrive haltingly, but many cling to a hope for gradually improving fortunes in the years ahead. No end in sight for exploitative working conditions. Despite sporadic messages about reducing internal competition and easing unrelenting demands, the daily reality for most Chinese cross-border commerce workers remains as bleak as ever. Behind the flashy headlines touting work-life balance initiatives lies a status quo still rooted in exploitation for the sake of growth. Shop owners admit sustained monitoring and maximizing every last hour of employee output remains essential just to keep the lights on. Promises of progress vanish when profits enter the equation. Moreover, even if attitudes start to shift in some corners, entrenched powers stand ready to quash such optimism. Layers of bosses and investors up the chain still heavily prioritize immediate financial returns over community well-being. Their short-term interests directly oppose any earnest push towards balanced weekends or reasonable workloads. As one seller put it, the day when workers need to take out loans just to earn their base wages no longer feels far-fetched given current trajectories. Despite the warnings, systems of oppression become harder to dismantle once rooted over years.
The sobering reality is that declarations heralding the end of ruthless demands have thus far breeds no tangible impact inside sweatshops or corporate halls. Paper Tiger policies without accountability or resources to enable alternatives seem to only entrench the ceaseless grind rather than offer respite. Rather than optimism, many exhausted workers feel cynicism taking hold as they witness a widening gulf between publicity stunts touting progress and the daily grind eroding health and sanity. Until basic human needs come before shareholder profits, the marathon towards equitable work for Chinese e-commerce staff remains filled with adversity. The breaking point approaches, but so far calls for systemic reform gain little traction while workers continue laboring on.